of you have been waiting for. Strange and mysterious lights hovering above East El Paso tonight. What's even more strange, very similar lights were spotted in Manhattan just two days ago. Above the skies of Northeast and East El Paso tonight, a sight that was a little more than stunning. This is what one of our photographers, Ram Moreno, caught on video. One solitary light that appears to be falling in the sky. But that light suddenly breaks apart into two, then three separate lights. Those lights then just freeze in the air and begin to hover. Eventually, a fourth light can be seen. Then the lights appear to be hovering and then moving in a strange pattern. Then they all disappear. We received a lot of phone calls into our newsroom tonight from people in the northeast part of town and on the east side, all of them wanting to know what was going on. And the descriptions from everyone calling, basically the same. One caller thought a plane was falling. Another thought it was a meteorite. Others, though, said it looked like a UFO. Now, you want to get really creepy? Check this video out. Just two days ago, in the sky above Manhattan, people froze on the street there as they saw these three lights hovering in the middle of the day. And check this out. The three lights are close to each other, then spread out into this triangle pattern. Now, look at the pattern side by side. This from Manhattan and the other tonight in El Paso. I gotta tell you, they do look eerily similar. Well, tonight we did talk with the El Paso Airport spokeswoman. She says there were air show planes in the air tonight running through maneuvers, though she couldn't tell us exactly which crews were doing that. Hmm. More exercises are going to happen tomorrow night as well. And Aurelia, I know you are a believer that little green men were floating around above us. Actually, we were more like joking about how they probably were in Manhattan and they were like, oh, these New Yorkers are too rude. Let's go somewhere nicer. Like they, headed they headed south. They headed south. Maybe they were trying to go to Roswell. They got lost. Welcome to the Petroglyphs in the Sky, the ultimate UFO show, with your host, Chad Worldwide. Shortly after 8 p.m., Arizona reported seeing a triangular-shaped object with three to thousands of people who saw more than stars in the night sky. The mystery remains unsolved and controversial. On March the 13th, 1997, compelling accounts of various lights These lights are now referred to as the Phoenix lights. were actually witnessed in evidence by others. What were these lights? What did the alien come back? Tonight, we explore the Phoenix lights in the sky with Jeff Woolwine from PetroglyphsInTheSkies.com. Jeff Woolwine and his petroglyph theories is entirely up to you. And whether he's a madman or a genius, I guess no one can say. What we can say that ancient art is riddled with images of strange beings, wheels of fire, and flying shields in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Skywatchers. Welcome to another episode of Petroglyphs in the Sky Ultimate UFO Show. I'm your host, Jeff Rowan. How are you doing today in this Tucson rainy day? It's great. I love it when it rains here. Okay, we got great uh, UFO videos to show you today. 
Um, one uh, at the end of the show is the one that I did uh, with Jim Roger from the Cutting Edge show here in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, it was a great show. I took him up there on South Mountain. And uh, we talked about the petroglyphs and the interpretations. And uh, even show um, some matching uh, UFOs with the rock art on uh, the mountains of South Mountain in, in Arizona. In Arizona. Um, you know, uh, this other signing that I have to present to you uh, today, this piece, um, I call this piece uh, The Flying Serpent and the Orbs. Orbs and the Flying Serpent. You know, when I was watching the mountain, um, I saw these things come off the mountain, and uh, it, it looked like a black serpent with white dots, and this black serpent actually goes up to this white dot and then moves around and finally gets into formation. <laughs> my uh, Facebook uh, friends um, actually made a stuffed animal out of one of my signings. Now, I, I can't really pronounce uh, his name, but you can find him on, on the Facebook there. And uh, also, you can look for me on, uh, on Facebook also. But this is, uh, this is uh, something that, uh, that, this, that this person made, and I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, it, looks, it looks really cool. And uh, here's the sighting, I hope you like it. Okay, as you can see here, this is the piece that I really like. As this white dot is stationary, this black serpent actually moves up to that white dot. See that there? See how it's not the white dot is not moving. The serpent will finally go back into position, into formation. It will actually circle around beneath this white orb. This is interesting because there's other white orbs and they actually go into a line. 
Now I stopped it there, you can actually see it's kind of, there's two of them there. And here's when they, uh, they go into formation. camera Oh shit dude Look at that shit Yeah I'm Kyle Dayton. And you're watching The Cutting Edge Revealing the Truth. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, what you've just watched is a small sample of what's in store for you tonight on tonight's show. Uh, so stay tuned. I think we're in for a very profound and uh, interesting show, to say the least. And uh, tonight's show is going to be dealing with ancient 1,000, maybe 2,000-year-old Hoho Competroglyphs and the symbols and messages that those ancient peoples left behind on the rock for us to see today. And uh, with us here in the studio tonight is the original researcher who made the connection between the ancient Hoho Petroglyph symbols and the very bizarre and strange looking UFOs, for example, like the ones you just saw coming in and out and in and out repeatedly of South Mountain. And I might add that they're coming in and out and in and out of particular locations, which you'll we'll talk about as the show progresses. And so, uh, the UFOs that uh, Jeff has been shooting 
coming in and out of South Mountain. They're not your grandfather's UFO. They're not boats. They're not shiny, silvery things. They're more like living life forms, uh, plasmatic life forms in the sky. They're very bizarre. I wish to welcome the original petroglyph slash UFO researcher, the one that made this connection, Jeff Woolwine, the first person to do this. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the show and appearing tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, appreciate you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have a question. No, no, that's okay. I don't want to interrupt you. I wanted to know if, in regard to your interpretation or deciphering of what the hieroglyphics are, uh, how does that compare with the so-called um, experts in their guidebooks? Have you found much, you know? Um, the academia? Yes, yes, yes. In your opinion. Oh, the macadamia. Yes. Oh, yeah, the macadamia. As far as, as the city archaeologists? No, I like, like or? general, like a guidebook in general, and they, they try to decipher what the hieroglyphics are, or the, uh, oh. the petroglyphs, I'm sorry, the petroglyphs are. Do you, do you match with them pretty much, or have you found much similarity or, or difference in well, you know, interpretation of that? Because no one has seen these things in over 1,000, 2,000 years, you know, it's been up until this point a guess on what these petroglyphs mean. And so when they write these books and trying to explain on some of the, you know, the interpretations, they have to put in that Native American myth because that's part of the story. And part of that story is these things came out of the sky or these, or these spirals represent doorways into the underground and stuff like that. But, you know, when they write it in their books, you know, they just say it's a, it's a myth or, you know, it, they, you know, they're in a trance. But I really think that these petroglyphs are meant to be taken literally. These petroglyphs are meant for our generation now. It really is the, a very... The reason why they haven't been able to figure them out up until this point is because that generation wasn't meant for them. This generation is meant for us. There's uh, some reptilian-like figures that Jeff will demonstrate on the rocks. And also, we'll see what looks something like a flying snake or uh, what some call a flying humanoid. So uh, why don't we just roll right into it listening to uh, Jeff's explanations. Here we found some, some spirals, some petroglyphs on this rock. Now, in my opinion, this rock is very significant. When we see spirals, some of the spirals represent doorways. And I believe that this petroglyph is representing a doorway into the stone. Here, if you notice, we have stairs that seem to be going into this doorway. Well, if you look on this rock right here, we have steps. They look like stairs. That kind of resemble these steps here. And where are they lead? They're going into the rock. The rock art that you have here wasn't chipped from South right, Mountain. No, they were thoughtful yes. enough to make a reproduction. <laughs> yeah, I carved yeah. it myself. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at the size of this guy here. He's got his arms up. He's kind of looking up at something. And we have another guy here. This guy's very tall. Could this be a giant? His, his arms are up and he's eating a poke. He's very tall. Here we have some other guys here. They seem to be looking up. This right here clearly is a UFO. He's starting to grow legs here. Possibly a tail. This is the diamond. This is this guy here. here, possibly a tail, long legs, they're looking up, we have a diamond, a diamond spiral, this is very special, very significant, and we have something that these guys seem to be looking up at over their heads, now if you look at this one, 
foot on how their feet. See their feet is in a different direction. Their feet's not the way normal feet should be. This is how you find out on whether or not it's a supernatural animal or whether or not it's a regular animal or not. Because of its feet, their feet is going the other direction. And it's only obvious it's over people's feet. Notice his, his body is square here. There's a guy right here. Okay, his arms is up. He's in the appeasement pose. And he's got a square head. And he's got a square body. This right here, I believe, represents a barbell. This is a barbell formation. Turning into a guy. He's morphing into a man. Here we have another entity kind of odd looking. This is very significant. Here again, it shows the feet in opposite directions. This is how you can tell that this is a supernatural animal and not a regular animal that me and you recognize. Out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And notice how they're all connected together. This must have been something to see in the sky. I believe the Indians saw this in the sky and they carved it down. Well, it looks like that's another show of Petroglyphs in the Sky. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you've seen any UFOs, email me at my website, petroglyphsinthesky.com. And see ya. Keep your eyes in the sky. Until the next exciting episode, 
Keep your eyes in the sky. You never know what you might see.